Welcome everybody. My name is Christoph Vastazare, and it is a real honor to speak in name of SmartStream on this event. My role in our organization is Senior Product Manager Aurora. Today I will present our solution for the CSDR regulation. I am sure that you heard already a lot of useful information about CSDR regulation. However, let's look to the objectives of this CSDR regulation. First of all, it is to harmonize the different rules that are currently applicable to all the CSDs in Europe. It is to establish a level of playing field among the CSDs, increase safety of security settlements and the securities infrastructures. It is to increase the efficiency of security settlement through introducing a true market for the operations of all national CSDs. It is also to increase the safety of these CSDs through applying high prudential requirements in line with international standards. And it is also to, in, last but not least, to create an integrated market for securities settlements with no distinction between national and cross-border securities transactions. But what is this CSDR regulation now actually? Well, a significant component of the CSDR re regulation is the introduction of a harmonized cash penalties regime across all European CSDs. It requires that cash penalties be collected by any European CSD from participants that failed settlement and redistribute that to participants suffering from this settlement failure. Existing local CSD penalty regimes will be replaced by the new CSDR regime. Any settlement instruction type which falls within the scope of the CSDR measures will be subject to standard penalty detection and calculation rules. A cash penalty is due for each day of failed settlement as from the end of the intended settlement date up until the date the instruction is finally settled or cancelled. Two types of cash penalties will be implemented. First of all, we have the late matching fail penalty to be applied on any instruction which is, is matched after the relevant cutoff of its intended settlement date. Second cash penalty is the settlement fail penalty that will be applied to any matched instruction which has reached the intended settlement date and which fails to settle. The failures of settle can be different, or can be various ones, including the being on hold fail option. We also have the mandatory buy-ins. So the CSDR regulation is going to introduce the mandatory buy-in. It will introduce a process for transactions which fails to settle due to lack of securities within the extension period to force the participants to do a mandatory buy-in. The transaction scope for these mandatory buy-ins is the same as for cash penalties. Last but not least, an important part of the CSDR cash penalty regulation is the reporting part. Each and every CSD will report to their direct participants on a daily basis the list of transactions that, from their view, failed to settle and are subject of cash penalties or mandatory buy-ins. On a monthly basis, 
the same CSDs will provide an overview of all transactions that fail to settle for that month, and that will be, that will settle. The payment will be settled directly from within the CSD. And last but not least, what are the CSDR players on the market? You have to understand that we have a lot of players worldwide that will be impacted by this CSDR uh, regulation. We have, first of all, the first layer is the buy-sell firms. Why are the buy-sell firms impacted? Well, many buy-side firms, European, but also non-Europeans, will be buying and selling European financial instruments on a frequent basis as part of their trading or investment strategy. The new rules will apply to certain types of financial instruments, like shares, bonds, units and funds, that are settled through a European CSD. To be in scope for the buy-in and penalty rules, those financial instruments must be admitted to trading on a European trading venue. The second layer of players that will be impacted by this CSDR regulation is actually the custodians. Custodians will have to amend their custody and depository agreements to require by side firms to comply with the mandatory buy-in requirements. Custodians will also pass their cash penalties related to settlement failures and caused by the buy side firms in accordingly to their relevant agreements. So the global custodian will pass the cash penalties that he has to pay to the CSDs over to the buy side uh, firms if they are the cause of the settlement failure. Also important to, to know is that any participant that fails consistently and systematically to deliver securities on the intended settlement date, the CSDR regime will require CSDs to establish procedures which enables them to suspend the participant and public, publicly disclose its content and systematic failure to deliver securities. This is according to a European Commission regulation from 2018, I think. How you will be considered as a consistently and systematically fail, failed participant is when your efficiency is 15% lower than the average over the last 12 months. So you see we have a lot of participants or players in this CSDR regulation that will be impacted. I think that over 3,000 companies are impacted by this new CSDR regulations. And therefore, SmartStream will offer you a solution to comply on this new CSDR regulation, but not only complying, it will be also enabling you to appeal and to report further to your clients in the CSDR chain. So our proposal is a fully integrated solution. It's a one application for validation, appeals and reporting. We, first of all, we will validate the penalties that you will receive through the reports from your uh, counterparties against internal list of failure. 
We will come back to that later when we will uh, look into the solutions that we have. We will have in our solution also a fully integrated exception management that will allow you to perform the appeals that are required due, during the relevant period. We will also notify, we will also pro provide uh, reporting frameworks to notify your own participants or to your own clients. So if you are a custodian, you can inform your buy side firms. <coughs> we can also offer as an optional module, the settlements module. What is the benefit of that? It will uh, actually avoid failures. Yeah. If you have the settlements module, you are going to validate already the settlement cycle and you will be able to detect earlier issues with securities deliveries or intended settlement day issues or any other issues. So that will allow companies to actually minimize or even avoid failures in their settlement process. And if you avoid failures, you avoid penalties. We offer also an on-premise or an on-demand implementation. Uh, on-demand is fully on a private or, or an own cloud. On-premise, of course, then the implementation will be done at the client uh, side itself. It is a fully pre-configured solution. What does that mean? That means that the implementation of the solution will also include all required appeal workflows, will also include reporting to your own clients, and will also include pre-configured validation rules that you can apply against your counterparties. There will be always a tolerance included. Basic tolerance will be 10%, but tolerance rules can be modified uh, if required by our clients. We offer actually two solutions. The first solution is the basic solution where we will validate, actually reconcile, uh, reports that we receive from our counterparties with failed settlement transactions and we will validate that against our own list of settlement failures. Once we have done our reconciliation, we can then start our appeal period where we will have the automatic chases and escalations if needed. There will be a full audit trail where mainly the appeals will be done over SWIFT. We also offer the opportunity to have some email workflows if required. Any exception case will be assigned to users and the challenge in the whole workflow of CSDR regulation is that actually the appeal period is very limited. So having a fully automated uh, exception management included in the solution is very important. Of course, reporting and uh, is of, is also important so that on a real time basis you will be able to view in our solution what is the penalty due to each and every CSD uh, that you are dealing with. The second solution that we offer to our clients is actually including the settlement reconciliation module. So what we are offering here is that the internal settlement failures will not come from a list that you will have to provide, but it will be issued out of the settlement reconciliation that will be the kickoff of the push of failed 
settlement transactions to the CSDR regulation solution for the internal view. And again, here we will reconcile that against the reports from your counterparties. Exception management, uh, appeal period, reporting, nothing changes here. What is changing here is actually that the list of internal failed settlement transactions will not come from a list that you will have to provide us, but will be pushed automatically from the settlement module that our solution has also. It is, it is very important to know that this settlement reconciliation will also offer the possibilities to our clients, not only to validate penalties, but in fact to avoid the penalties. Because settlement reconciliation will enable you to early detect a potential issue in the settlement cycle. A small overview of what our solution will offer is, like I said, it will first validate or reconcile your view of the penalties against the view of your counterparties. You will see here, for example, this is from the Luxembourg uh, CSD, where we have two transactions, our view, their view. You see it's a late matched uh, failure, and it is on this security account. It's a new one. Uh, this penalty amount is 100 euro, the eyes in. So you will see in one screen which are the validated being matched penalties, which which are the proposed penalties, meaning within tolerance rules that you apply, or which ones are the open? What can it be? For example, uh, your counterparty is reporting um, a, a failed transaction, but from your view, this is not a failed transaction. So these transactions will be outstanding. It can also be that you have a settlement transaction that you think is part of the CSDR regulation, but that has not been reported by your counterparty. That can also be a reason. And these transactions will then remain open, outstanding, until the appeal period is over. And you will have the possibility to perform exception management on these transactions. Like I said as well, a second component of our solutions is the analytics component where you will see um, in real time what are my amounts due to each and every CSD. So here in this case, you see uh, to the Luxembourg CSD, I need to pay currently for the month of February, for example, I need to pay 100 euro to the Belgium CSD. I need to pay 123 and then to the Danish CSD at this moment in time, I need to pay 100 euro again. You will also see for each and every CSD, the percentage of the total amount that you are due for the, and it is always a current month, of course. So this is actually, in a nutshell, what our solutions are. We have a solution where you will have to provide the list of failed internal failed settlements yourself, or with the optional settlement module of Aurora, we will be able to detect earlier eventual failures of settlements that will then avoid any penalties later. But if you are going a step further, you could also optimize your post-trade process. 
because your post trade process will actually determine what will be your cash penalties or mandatory buy-ins that you will have to pay. What is actually trade processing? Trade processing occurs after a trade is complete. At this point in time, the buyer and the seller compare trade details. Especially important in non-standards markets like OTCs. Data to in-house systems is also important because data is not standardized and not harmonized. So how are we doing the post-trade processing? We've verified details of the transactions. Many deals are done over phone still. The process includes shifting records of ownership. The period after trade is known as the settlement period. During the settlement period, the buyer must make the payments. The seller must deliver the security. And of course, there is a high pressure of settlement dates in these clearing processes. And this will then actually result in penalties under the CSDR regime. What we offer is actually a full post-trade processing module. And what are the challenges in the post-trade processing? It's legacy technology, multiple intermediaries or partners, different exception handling capabilities in each and every legacy technology. There is a rising cost pressures from manual processes. In combination with the CSDR regulation, the pressure will only be higher. There is also part of CSDR, the regular, regulatory pressures, and there is a lack of integration results in lower STP rates. Are these the only challenges that you have in your post-trade processing? No, of course not. There is the client onboarding, who is not that easy. Most of the times you have your reporting requirements to your clients, to uh, legal reporting. You have your risk and settlements, automation, is a big challenge and like I said before, client onboarding is not that easy. We implemented the software, the trade process control software at a client where the client onboarding took them so many times that it was very difficult for them in uh, onboard new clients without having high costs. How to improve the post-trading process, Dixit the market. Currently, there is a low quality data. What they want, what the market wants is standardization. There are a lot of duplicated efforts, what in data enrichment, uh, I think on uh, SSIs, for example, while well, they what the market wants is trusted centralized data sources. They are delayed processes. What the, the market wants is direct processes. And we have manual interfaces. Uh, we think about going to a website, download the list of trades, download your reports. Well, the markets wants all these interfaces to be automated. Of course, this will benefit a lot. Will reduce the breaks and the hours. Will make your post trade enrichment allocation reduced or eliminated. And the cross firms interactions will be secure and efficient. How can we respond on that one? Because this is fully actually avoiding the CSDR regulations and the cash penalties uh, 
related to that, well, we offer a TPC solution, trade process control solution, where we will integrate all the different components of the post trade workflow. So we have the different modules that you will need to perform the full scope of reconciliations, securities, investigations, uh, cash confirmations. We also have a workflow component, and that is very important to excellence and client uh, interaction and uh, real-time transaction. We also have the referential data component that will allow you to store SSI, standard payment instruction, your portfolio static data, where you will link your different safety P accounts with your uh, portfolio ID. We will have the workflow matrix where you will be able to initiate the next step in the life cycle of a trade. But we will come back to that later. And we also have our cash fee distribution. What is cash fee distribution? The cash fee distribution is actually when you receive from your bank uh, statements and you have transactions, fees that are not yet booked on your fund, we offer the possibility to automatically initiate a booking transaction for this type of transactions. What is the overview of the trade process control module, the life cycle of a trade? It is from trade capture till accounting, over confirmation, settlement, transaction reconciliation, and position reconciliation. TPC is a single integrated solution for the entire transaction life cycle that improves efficiency, speed, and excellence. It increases automation thanks to customized workflows adapted to your specific needs. It bridges the gaps between middle, front, and back office. And it streamlines and optimizes exception management using a single tool across all functions and products. It also allows you to have powerful dashboards and reports providing useful insights into pain points and root problem causes. The feature, like I said, is that, like, like I said before, the slide before, is that you have an alert and escalation, ensuring problems are quickly identified until resolution. And we can configure this exception handling man with manual or automatic workflows. We have an overdue processing, we have templates, we have collaboration, integration. All these features are possible within the TPC module. The benefits, you have a better visibility of all your trades and of the trades that are actually failing or due to failure and this across all asset classes and business functions. There is a lot of standardization in the post trade processing. <laughs> Sorry. Why? Because we will have the referential data that we will keep in a central place. Think about standard settlement instruction. With the workflow, we will also automate each and every step in that trade process workflow. That will enable you more automation and a better operational control result in less risk and lower cost. I will give you an example of an automation. Two years ago, uh, I was giving training to one of our clients that implemented TPC. And I was saying, yes, once your trade has been confirmed, the settlement cycle will be initiated on the market within the second. 
and the, one of the of the client employees looked at me and he said, Christoph, but then we cannot make mistakes anymore. Because at this moment we have 40 minutes to correct our mistakes. I said, no, with TPC, it's a fully automated system with a workflow behind that will kick off each and every cycle of your trade process control. That will also allow you to have early detection, exception detection. Errors are quickly detected, investigated and resolved. That will then prevent you costly settlement failures. And we all know with the current CSDR regulation, this is very important because CSDR is actually the objectives of CSDR is actually to tackle these issues and challenges that we have in the trade process, <coughs> sorry, post trade process workflow. Efficiency will have a boost with thanks to powerful investigation tools that are available across the entire life cycle. And we will have also an inside reporting. So this is this is what we offer on top of our CSDR solution is the trade process control module. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I hope you have a good overview of our offering for the CSDR regulation.